Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic of the Philippines, His Excellency Ferdinand R. Marcos, Jr. Thank you, uh, uh, the ARTA uh, Director General Ernesto Perti. Please sit down. <laughs> uh, our constant companion these days <laughs> in uh, all that we are doing as we encourage businesses to come to the Philippines, the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, President George Barcelon. Uh, all my fellow workers in government, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am very happy to be able to join you at this Telco Summit, which I am sure is going to be important and instrumental in realizing our vision of a truly digital Philippines. I think that it is impossible to overstate the importance of the telco industries, the importance of digitalization, the importance of improving the ease of doing business for all the plans that we have for the Philippines. And that's why my gratitude goes to the organizers of the event, of, uh, to ARTA, its partner agencies, for your shared efforts to engage stakeholders towards developing a fast and uh, developing uh, uh, telecommunication system and digitalization of our, uh, of our systems in our country. Uh, in, in, um, as I said, the digitalization process is going to be a very important part of improving our ease of doing business. And uh, we will, of course, the first phase, as I see it, is to, do, uh, to, to digitalize the bureaucracy. Now, the, the bureaucracy, the national government, and down to the LGUs. Now, the, um, the development of digitalization in our country has been, there have been areas, for example, in the LGUs, I see some very progressive LGU, LGU chief executives who have gone ahead and digitalized their areas and have gone ahead of the, uh, uh, in fact, of the national government. There are sectors, there are agencies in the national government, especially in the finance sector, especially um, in, uh, uh, for example, the science and technology sector. All of these uh, have already uh, digitalized and it is, uh, um, it is good to see that people have taken the initiative. Now it is up to us to put the system together so that we have a, uh, uh, a system, a, we have a data center, we have a, a repository of data to which the different agencies have access to. This will simplify everything that we do with, uh, with the, in the, in the um, uh, business of government as we try to process and we try to serve the public in uh, giving them uh, all the services that are necessary and making it easy for them to avail of those services. The, that's why this endeavor is imperative, especially now that we live in a very dynamic, fast-changing world where we are all, where we are around all these smart devices and we have the means, we have the potential to make our lives easier. The way the landscape changes accelerates faster than ever, compelling us to be even smarter, even bolder in finding digital solutions to many problems. However, on the other side of that coin, uh, the encouraging part is technology will provide those solutions, that it is up to us to find them, but technology is there to provide the solutions that technology itself <laughs> may have brought to the system. And that's why it is ongoing. It's not something that we say we fixed, finished. You cannot, you cannot leave it. Uh, you must stay. It is one of those situations that if you're standing still, you're going backwards. And it is not, it's not as if we have a choice in having and doing this. It's not some, it is not for us merely an option. Maybe we should digitalize, maybe not. It's not that way at all. If we, if we are to survive, and even more so if we are to flourish in the post-pandemic economy, 
we must digitalize and we must digitalize as digitalize and digitize as quickly as possible and continue to do so taking full advantage exploiting the new technologies the best technologies and when I talk about technology I don't mean just hardware or software when it comes to processing but I mean also the new ideas the new strategies the new techniques that people have found to be successful in their other in their experiences maybe in other countries maybe in other areas of the Philippines but we it is up to us to search for them to actively search for those solutions they do exist it is up to us to find them and if they do not they still do not exist then it is up it is also up to us to find a way to uh, gain that knowledge, to do the research, to find the technology, to gain that knowledge, so we bring it uh, onto our systems to make them better. So I'm very excited to see that all the important players in this industry are here to discuss ways of identifying bottlenecks and areas of improvement in the telecommunications sector and moving towards a future-proof Philippines. Achieving a more connected and genuinely digital Philippines is not possible without you, our stakeholders in the telecom sector. You have demonstrated the crucial role of the telecom sector in the delivery of basic services to our people, especially during the height of the COVID pandemic. Many other aspects of our society amidst restrictions and lockdowns have found, have found those solutions, have found refuge in their telecommunications capabilities. So as we reopen ourselves to the world, we go ahead with our initiatives to enhance our digital infrastructure, to improve our services, and be sure that it will benefit the public. The work that you are doing here is part of the building blocks we are gradually putting together into place to enable the Philippines that is ready for the future. It's the goal of this administration to build a truly digital Philippines. It is why we are doubling our efforts to reach the most remote parts of the country by providing access to mobile cellular services and Wi-Fi. In fact, we have been firm in intensively rolling out key programs such as the Broadband Massa program, the Free Wi-Fi for All program, the Sambuanga Basilan Wireless Broadband Network, the establishment of the National Government Data Center. These are just some of the projects that we are undertaking to make our people more adaptable and connected, especially in this age of what we have come to call the new normal. We also are streamlining the efforts of government in processing and issuance of permits and licenses to accelerate the development of telecommunication internet infrastructure in the country. This, I think everyone has realized, is a crucial part of our development and that uh, we should we, we work towards having the connectivity and also having the capability that once we connect to remote places that they have the capability of doing business with the government without having to go to the main offices they can do it over the internet and that will streamline that will immediately make it uh, more uh, make, it, make, make it a quicker, more efficient way of uh, dealing with, uh, uh, with our citizenry. Uh, the Central Bank has already, has already achieved its goal ahead of schedule of having 50% of payments, payments to the Central Bank and payments by the Central Bank, 50% over the Internet. And we are continuing, continuing to do that. To, 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 reach eventually 100 percent so that is the ideal and that is what we need to do and uh, uh, if we are able to do that we have to if, if for us to be able to do that we still have to improve our connectivity our connectivity rate is still pretty low we're still be below 70 percent uh, and that's not good enough especially for an archipelagic country such as ours where connectivity is exceedingly important because we have many isolated communities who need some form of contact, some form of uh, communication with the rest of the country 
with the rest of the world. And that is why that is a priority. And that is why, well, as I said at the very start, it is impossible to overstate the importance of connectivity, of the telcos, of all of our new technologies uh, over the internet, whether it be by fiber optic cable, whether it be Starlink, whether it be from other satellites, uh, whatever, the, whatever the system is appropriate, we need to explore it and we need to apply it. So these are the elements that we are having to deal with. These are the options that we are choosing from. But we have to move quickly. Uh, when I look around, when I was in ASEAN and uh, APEC, uh, I saw that we were not, not too badly off, but we could do so much better. And if we are to compete properly with our neighbors, and that time will come, and it is coming now very, very quickly upon us, that time will, then when that time comes, we will have to uh, compete uh, with our, our neighbor countries because the region is still going to be, my, in my estimation, in my view, this region is still going to be the driver of the global economy as soon as things, quote unquote, normalize. So I think, and that's why we will have to compete and we will have to cooperate with our neighbors in the region. And to do that, we must be, at the very least, at the same level of digitalization as they are. Right now, we're not quite there, but let's work hard at it. That's why I encourage the relevant government agencies, our private sector partners, to ensure that these efforts will be implemented, they will be strengthened and translated into a more efficient delivery of government services. Our digital infrastructure and services will definitely change, has already changed, the way we experience the world around us. It has changed everything. It has changed, the pandemic changed everything, and the, uh, the internet changed right along with it. We work differently, we shop differently. I mean, I don't need to repeat all of that. You all know it, you experienced it all yourselves. So that's, what we, that, that's the world that we have to adjust to. As daily consumers of information and technology, we must learn to capitalize on this sector in order to be more productive in ways we, we can only imagine. It's my hope that the summit will serve as an avenue to break barriers amongst regulating agencies. You have started the good work already. Uh, I saw in your, uh, in your report the, the lessening of the requirements, document the requirements, the days of processing from 800 plus days does that actually happen? <laughs> <laughs> I was astounded. 886 days. Oh my God. Well, we can't we can't do do that anymore. <laughs> we're going to have to we're going to have to improve. Uh, well, we have, you've gone a long way. You're down to I think 26. Yeah. So that's uh, that's a very <laughs> that is a risk. That is a very significant improvement, but that is precisely the kind of thing that we have to do. And that is exactly what ARTA was created to do. And I'm glad to see that uh, very much uh, we are doing, we are doing, the, uh, we are seeing the progress in terms of um, making it easy for uh, government to work to ser and to serve its people. There is another aspect to digitalization. And that is, we must also be ready. We have espoused uh, very much the partnerships between the private sector and the public sector. The private sector is highly digitalized. So if we are to do business with the private sector, government must also be highly digitalized. So with your support, your cooperation, your active participation in these endeavors, I'm confident that we can build a digital backbone that is not only strong, efficient, robust, but it also exhibits the hallmarks of accessibility, reliability, and inclusiveness. So let's work. Let's work towards building a program that is brighter, that will bring a brighter and more connected tomorrow for every Filipino. 
Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Magandang hapon po at mabuhay po kayo.